What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, the podcast that wastes hours of your life that you are never getting back. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Sam. Uh, Gabe was supposed to be here, but unfortunately, he is working today in a surprise turn of events so that's a bummer uh i do know that he is enjoying this book um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later uh but for today this is sam's first official book pick for the podcast uh we'll be discussing ninth house by lee bardugo before we get started though i'll just mention that all of our socials and other links are down in the description if you'd like to reach out to us including our patreon page where you can watch all of these episodes live as we record them and join us in the chat to be part of the fun but if you're watching later on YouTube, drop us a comment down below and tell us what you're reading or what you thought of Ninth House, because we would love to chat with you about it. Uh, also, we will, of course, be spoiling Ninth House, so be prepared for that before watching the rest of this video. But guys, with that said, let's get into it. We, uh, we actually were just talking for almost an hour about the... Uh, House of the Dragon season two ending. Uh, so if anybody would like to to check that out, it's gonna be on YouTube by the time you're watching this. Uh, so go go check that out because we we had a lot of fun chatting about that. But how have you been this week, Sam? I think uh, the last time we were on it was last week for Stormlight is mm -hmm. the last time we were we were hanging out. Uh, so how how's your week been? just crazy. I, um, am a freelance social media manager. So I like build websites and run, you know, businesses, social media pages. And there is a cat cafe that is opened here in my town. Yes. That sounds and, like a nightmare. Uh, I am highly allergic to cats, basically just okay, allergic good. to cats, but the business itself is apparently, you know, something <laughs> Apparently cat lovers are are a big thing. They they really love cats and it is it opened on Thursday and so it has been a very busy week with me for updating the website with the adoptable cats and the opening and going and whatnot. So it has been a really just this week just flew by for me. It, there was just yeah. so much going on. Every second of my day was filled with something outside of my full time job, you know. So it's yeah. been it's been a really crazy week, and it was really nice to have this book that I had read before, you know, be the book yeah. that we were doing. It made it just have it, like a chill. Yeah, it, it was. It made it easier for me this week. So it was a great like lineup of what was happening yeah. in my life or what we were <laughs> reading this week. <laughs> How That's about you? good. I'm I'm in a I'm in a group chat with with a bunch of my friends and we're always talking about like get togethers or like planning stuff or whatever. And somebody had posted a picture of this kitten. It was very cute. And uh, she said, Hey, my friend's cat just had like a litter of kittens and she's giving them away. If anybody wants one, she's not even selling them, just giving them away. So if anybody wanted a kitten, like these are some great, some great kittens to come get. Uh, and somebody mentioned, um, uh, this other girl she was like oh i totally would if i if i wasn't so allergic to them um yeah. and then everybody replied like emoji like sad face or whatever and Ooh. then i i replied and i was like i totally would if cats weren't the pure embodiment of evil like i <laughs> you're like i'm not a pirate in the aquamora universe okay like right. i do need one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I do not like cats like at really. All. See, yeah. I like cats. I'm just so deathly allergic to them that it's not <laughs> an option. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I grew up. I grew up with two cats. Um, and when I was young, I was like, oh, cats are a great pet or whatever. And then when I finally, I I think I was, I think I was thirteen when we got our first dog like as as a family like in my lifetime yeah and uh once i had gotten the dog i was like oh this is a real pet 
cats are not <laughs> like they suck compared to this like this dog is awesome <laughs> and then i just over time i just realized what little assholes cats are <laughs> um and i was I just mean, like, like yeah the same thing could be said about one of my dogs he, he mm. can be such an asshole <laughs> yeah i've i've been really fortunate all of the dogs that i've had were just like super friendly uh super easy going didn't really need a whole lot from me they just like to hang out and sit on my lap or whatever my dogs um, are like that but my one dog like so in the morning i'll be getting ready and right now it's summer so my son has to go to this um synagogue where the his camp picks up his the people that go to camp with him every morning and so my husband will leave before i do with my son to bring him to the bus stop mm -hmm. in the time that my husband has left the house and i come downstairs from finishing getting ready for the day total of maybe 10 minutes my dog will poop like spite poop though on purpose because he's so angry that he has not only been left but another person is left in the house upstairs and not oh. paying attention to him and oh wow so that's what i mean when like he's an asshole is that like he is doing it because he's mad at us and right he's spiting us other than that he's the sweetest dog he, he, he <laughs> just wants all the loves he wants everything but He's like human in a way, you know, yeah. he's like, I'm mad at you. And this is right. the only way I can show you I'm mad at you. Oh, man, that's so crazy. My <laughs> my dog has not had an accident in the house for like years now. He's four. Yeah. Um, and I think <clears throat> I think like at least a year and a half ago was his last accident that I can remember. Um so yeah he doesn't he doesn't like spite poop or anything he's he's like the perfect um he's he's the perfect combination of wanting love and like wants to like sit on your lap and like hang out with you but also he'll just like go do his own thing and he'll just like go lay on the couch yeah. or go play with a toy and for yeah. like most of the day yeah. um and so it's it's really nice for uh for me and somehow he always knows when i'm on the podcast yeah. like he just he just knows what time it is he usually goes away or he's like sitting here on the bed sometimes yeah. um and then somehow i i have no idea because i don't know if it's the cadence of my voice or what but he knows when the podcast ends. Every single time <laughs> it ends, he will walk through that door and come in here. He knows it's over somehow. I don't know how, but um, it's pretty wild. That's uh, so funny. But my my week was interesting. I won't talk about the whole thing because most of it was pretty boring. But I did go to a my my buddy was having a birthday party on Friday, and it was like '90s themed. Mm -hmm. And so I ordered like some nineties, like, uh, like a, a shirt kind of like this, that was like nineties themed. And I have like the, the, the hat that's like, you like know what I mean? Hat? Like the, the bucket hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I had a lot of fun at that, but the thing was, is Sam, this was a dance party. Mm -hmm. They had a, they had like a stage that they rented and all of these lights and, and, a, a DJ that was like mixing music and playing and everybody was dancing. Sam, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, I feel so confident in so many areas of my life. I feel like I could walk up to literally anyone and talk to them and, you know, silver tongue my way. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I feel so good about all of that um in almost any given situation yeah for some reason i cannot bring myself to get on a dance floor at all like not at, at all. all like i it just like scares the living <clears throat> shit out of me and i am just like i just i can't do it like i just freeze up and i never i feel like there was this period of time uh and i don't know when it would have been but there, there was a period of time where like everybody else learned how to dance and I somehow <clears throat> missed that. I, I don't get it. And I think that, uh, I think dancing for guys is a lot more difficult than it is for, <laughs> for women. Uh, cause, cause women, all, all they have to do is put their hands in the air and move their hips back and forth 
and and that's a dance and everybody is just like enthralled um but for guys we have to think a lot more about it and i'm just like i just missed i missed the boat like and now i don't know i don't know how to learn it like how to, like i am not coordinated i am not fluid um and so i even if i knew like several different dance moves i wouldn't know how to like chain them together <laughs> So I'm just like any any time there's dancing, I'm like, please don't fucking ask me to dance. Please don't do it. Like it is. Oh, I I just I hate it. And the thing is, I wish I knew how to do it. Like it looks like so much fun. I'm like, I wish I wish that I had whatever that is. Um, but for some reason I don't. And so <laughs> I, I got very drunk on, on Friday night and I hung out with the other people that weren't dancing. dancing yeah. Um, and, and they, they would all occasionally leave to go dance. Then I'd be on my own for a minute. I have to find the next person that is also not dancing. Um, but it was very fun. I, yeah. I, had, a, I had a really good time. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was kind of my, my big thing for the weekend. Um, and then I got a haircut and I haven't gotten a haircut in like four weeks. And so I was like, I, I desperately, desperately needed one. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. So let's, let's talk about this book. We got some general thoughts here. I'm assuming that because you've read the book a couple times now, you want to hear what my like first time thoughts are on this on this bad boy. Yeah, because on my reread, I don't even know if this was my first reread. This might have been like my second reread because I think when oh. the book came out, I had reread the first one again before I I read the second one. So this might have been my second reread. Um, but I realized like how confusing some of the things could be on your first read, not knowing the things that you know, which is obviously obvious, <laughs> you know, mm, yeah. sense, but a lot of things are going to make more sense, but um, there was a lot that I had forgotten about. So in a way, a lot of it was a, a first time read for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's always nice when yeah. you forget um about a lot of the the plot moments and stuff yeah. and you're kind of able to able to relive it a bit and it was a nice change of pace in the way of what we usually read you know mm -hmm. to, to step especially outside. after stormlight yeah yeah to just step outside of that and almost get into the realm of uh, what's the word i'm looking for like urban go, fantasy yeah that type of stuff um so it was it was nice to to get to deviate a little bit from what we usually read <laughs> for sure yeah definitely definitely yeah but what did you think on your first read <laughs> um so i i actually liked this book a lot um especially as i got closer to like the middle and the end mm -hmm. um i i actually think that i'm going to start the second book on monday Good. uh because th this will come out after the fact but coming up this weekend we have a big live stream and that's going to be our, our episode for the week um and so i think uh i want to read the sequel um and then i have another he who fights with monsters to read for gabe um but i definitely i definitely want to read the sequel it, it intrigued me enough to uh to keep going with it um it definitely has its faults i i think most of which are at the beginning Yes. And um, I I was texting you and I'm like, I am so confused. And I don't usually get like that. Uh, Gabe is usually the one that's like, I'm just not getting this. I'm usually the one that's able to like, I don't know, like just Tread get water. it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and this one, I was just like, what is going on? And part of that is because you are so bad at explaining books, Sam. Because I didn't <laughs> want to give anything away. The question but... you're asking, if I had answered it truthfully, would have given away things that you had not learned yet. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is a couple of weeks ago when we decided to do this book, you were explaining what this what this book is to me. And you said that you're like okay so it's like a dark academia setting there's like these different like secret societies which is all true but you're i i specifically asked i was like so is there is it supernatural or is it just like yay like 
students at Yale, and you're like, uh, you don't really know. There might be magic. There might not be. And in the first couple sentences, it's like she's seeing ghosts. They're talking about werewolves. I'm like, okay, so there's definitely magic. So I went into it thinking that it was going to be like this mystery, like, like she was going to be a new student at Yale and like working her way into all the secrets. But and she was. <laughs> yeah, but like you knew, you knew from the beginning that there was like a lot of magic that the the supernatural existed and people were very aware of it. And I think, I for me, I'll, I'll say real quick before I go on with this, I I had to go and read the description of the book yeah. because I was just like, am I just like I I expected this one thing and I'm getting this other thing? Am I just not getting it? And so I read the description and once I did that, I was like okay so what what i'm interpreting is correct in the way that i'm i'm thinking about this from what the description told me um and so from there i think that the book the book would have been much better served um having her like come to yale in some sort of way or maybe she gets recruited but she doesn't know why she's recruited um and then she like is figuring all this stuff out with the secret societies. Like she doesn't necessarily know that the secret societies have all this magic behind them, but she finds that out little by little. Um, I think it was, I think it was Lien's library where she was talking about this and she's like, you know, Harry Potter is fun because you, you start with Harry Potter, not knowing anything about magic and you have this, bond with him over the beginning of the book because you're discovering magic as he does but, mm -hmm. but going into this book it was like you go in and there's just like magic and it's like okay i don't feel like even though we get flashbacks i don't feel like i get any of these experiences with the main character i don't feel like i grow along with her in discovering the supernatural yeah. and all this stuff mm -hmm. i I feel like we get we get told that and then we see the flashbacks later where there could have been some great mystery, but we already know that what she's seeing as a child is real. Um, and so I think I think that's like literally the one thing I would change about this book. Everything else I really, really enjoyed. But it was just that beginning where I was like, oh, man, there was there was such a missed opportunity to have this like creeping crawling mystery of like discovering these secret societies and working her way into them and discovering magic. I think that would have been so cool. Um, but yeah, from the beginning I was just like, okay, so I guess there's ghosts. Okay. So I guess there's werewolves. Okay. So I guess there's divination of entrails and portal magic and all of this just gets thrown at you point blank. And you're like, okay, I, I guess that's just how this world works and everybody's aware of it. Um, but so, well, that's, I, that's my minor rant. I'll, I'll let yeah. you go ahead. No. So I think when I first, you asked me about that, it has been at least like two years since I've read sure. the books. And I, so I figured, I, yeah, I was just giving you a bit of shit. Yeah. had completely, you know, forgotten the, the minor points and only knew, remembered a few of the, the major ones. Um, but I actually do agree with you on the way it could have been told in a different way because while we've read books where you're in the present and then they go back to these like flashbacks, this one was different in the sense that there were flashbacks to something that happened a few months ago, but then there were flashbacks to what happened over a year ago. And yeah. they were all told in this alternating order, kind of no rhyme or reason. And yes that can definitely be confusing. It's a, it's a very odd way to tell a story. Yeah. And it, it made, it made the pacing weird. I, I really did love the flashbacks. Um, but I think just the way they were used, like you said, there was no like rhyme or reason to it. There was a couple that had to do with like the main story going on. Mm -hmm. But if you look at something like lies of Locke Lamora, Every time you get a flashback, you know that whatever information you've gleaned from that flashback is going to be used, uh, you know, possibly in the in the very next scene. Yeah. And so with this, I feel like it was all information that we 
wanted or needed maybe needed for like the broader story but it there was no like direct correlation with what was actively happening in yeah. the story uh mm -hmm. besides uh darlington's flashbacks his his had more connectivity mm -hmm. so that you understand like how he got to this point that that made more sense um yeah, but the flashbacks of her like pre-life don't really make any sense until the right. very very end of the book yeah yeah and i i think i think there could have been more just connective tissue even if it was just like a mention even if it was just like you know something happened in the flashback and then you get her thinking about it in the yeah. present like even even something like that mm -hmm. uh, i i think the flashbacks even could have worked better as not like a cut and dry flashback but her in present day recounting the event yeah you know like thinking sure. about it um i think i think that could have that could have worked a little bit better like a thought bubble yeah that um been but uh but overall i i enjoyed them uh i i man i don't know i don't want to say i liked the flashbacks more than the present day i think i liked them both equally because i liked learning about her early days of like figuring all this out and her friends that she was like using drugs with and stuff um and yeah there there was a lot of a lot of really cool cool stuff there um but i do want to mention uh, did you do the audiobook for this one i did i did from this reread okay yeah the narrator was so amazing to the point where i am going to go on to audible and see what other books she's done i know she's <laughs> done awesome. all of lee bardugo's lee bardugo's books yeah um but she she was so good that i i want to seek out what other books she's done and i feel like that's pretty rare for me yeah. um and i you know hopefully this doesn't come off in like a like a weird like sexist way or anything but i I have not found too many female narrators that I've really enjoyed. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot of them where I'm like, you are just kind of doing the bare minimum. And with this girl, uh, I should probably shout her out. It's uh, Lauren Fortgang. Uh, and then the male narrator was Michael David Axtell. Um, and surprisingly, I think he wasn't like nearly as good as she was. Like, I, I think she like easily outshined him in the, mm -hmm. in the narrator space. Um, but this girl, man, she was incredible. Great. She did mm -hmm. like voices for all the, all the different characters. And on top of that, I think something people don't really think about a lot of the time is like the inflection of the voice. <laughs> like it sounds like an actor playing a scene. Like when she would say some like coy flirty thing, her voice would like go up a little bit and she would do kind of like, you could hear the flirtation yeah. in her voice. And I'm like, man, this yeah. is, this is awesome. So, yeah. so props to her that that doesn't happen too often for me. And I like when there's a male and female parts of a book that they give you a male and female narrator. It just like yeah. brings you more into the moment of what you're listening to as opposed to being like, oh, I'm listening to a woman do like a male's voice or a male right. trying to do a woman's voice. <laughs> I'm I'm glad. I'm glad they did that for uh, Darlington's yeah. POVs because I think that already there wasn't a whole lot of distinction just in the book between present day in Darlington's POVs. So I'm mm -hmm. glad that they had a, a guy narrator do his part. So you're like, this is, this is something different. You're, yeah. you're actively uh, or intentionally seeing something different. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I did like that. And then speaking of, of Alex being flirty, I, so going into this book, I thought it was going to be uh, spicy, like fourth wing. I thought it was going to be like another <laughs> like romanticy, and yeah. it was not that at all. There was some really like sad, uh, sexual moments of like assault and stuff that mm -hmm. that was awful. Um, but it it didn't have like a there was no romance. I kind of thought that we were gonna find out that she had been in a relationship with Darlington, and I think they were kind of like something kind of because there's there's one moment that i'll talk about in a second mm -hmm. um but uh 
but yeah, I thought we were going to find out that they had been in a relationship and that she was like trying to get him back. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know where the second book goes. Like, I don't, I don't know if he like comes back or anything. Um, but I was surprised to see in this book that there was no like romance plot line, really. Like there wasn't any like super spicy scenes or anything. Um, but one thing I will say just from a guy's point of view is a lot of these, uh, or not these, because this isn't one of them, but a lot of the like romanticy books, or even like a lot of the fantasy books, mm -hmm. it's the it's the guy that's like super hot and like all the girls are like you're you're following the like the bookish girl or the girl that's not like miss popular or whatever yeah. and mm -hmm. her and this super hot guy end up going uh getting together yeah. um and in this one i was like as a guy alex is super hot <laughs> it's like she's tattoos <laughs> yeah and just 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 her like uh just her like attitude i was i was there for for all yeah. of it there, there's a there's a scene where uh she goes up to trip there was there was a couple moments where i'm like oh that that was hot yeah she she goes up to trip and i think i think this part is meant to be more of a joke uh i'm just a deviant i guess but she <laughs> she goes up to him and she's like uh uh she's like hey i need to talk to you and he says what are you gonna ask you asking me to prom or something and she's like depends are you gonna be a good little slut and put out for me and it was as like as soon as I heard that part, I was like, "Oh, Spencer's gonna love this. Yeah. Spencer is going to love this." <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, shit!" Yeah, and, and then, then, are you gonna bring him home on time? He's like, "She's like, why you want yes. seconds?" Oh. Yes, I was <laughs> like, "Oh my god, this is like too much for my yeah. for my libido right now." Um, but <laughs> but no, yeah, I there was. There was that, and then there was uh, the time that her and Darlington oh, yes. fell asleep together, oh. and he had he had like taken like a potion or something, and he had like this enamor with her, um, and he, he got she like in the fog at a party, and it yeah, made him, like obsessed with her all of a sudden. <laughs> right, right, and and that was like crazy or whatever. But they get they get back to the house, and I guess she just like decided to fall asleep in the same bed as him or something and they wake up together and i'm i'm sorry if nobody <laughs> wants to hear this because it's a little bit graphic um but he's like playing with her a little bit but he's yeah. asleep he's not like intentionally yeah. trying to like mm -hmm. do anything nasty or anything but he's like passed out but the potion is still like working its way through him and so he's like he's like touching her and stuff and she wakes up and says something to the effect of either wake up and fuck me or stop touching me. Yeah. And I was just like, mm. <laughs> I don't know why that got me, but <laughs> yeah, and I that was another also, moment. Like the part where they need to go do the, the crossing to go to the underworld or whatever. And right. she brings the statue back that the girl wants in exchange. And then the girl's like, nah, just kidding. Like not going to let you do it, but thanks for the statue. And she like, yeah her in like a headlock and oh it's like, no, yeah you're gonna you're gonna do what you said you were gonna do or you're gonna regret this <laughs> yep yep that was that was super yeah. cool i was like that that was badass because i could picture that scene so well where it's yeah. just some like prissy yale student yeah. who don't know who they're <laughs> fucking with and you have no idea you have no yeah. idea <laughs> yeah and she's like i am not above choking you out and yeah. throwing you on the ground yeah um and so i i loved i loved that so much yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i i really enjoyed uh i would say a good i i enjoyed a good like 60 to 70 percent of the characters um her especially and i even liked uh turner the cop yeah <laughs> um i thought he was a good addition to the story he plays um, a much bigger role in book two Oh, okay. Because she made it seem like he was going to go away. She's like, no, I don't know if I'll ever talk to him very again. Very much like a main character in book two. Okay, cool. Yeah, I I liked him a lot actually. Yeah, yeah he was great. Um, I liked. 
I mean, it's just the it's a very classic trope in these kind of stories, but I I like it every time where there's like someone who like doesn't believe in magic but knows that they're in a a circle of people who do believe in magic and they're like yeah okay you guys are magical like i'm i don't believe in that shit yeah and then slowly they get things revealed to them where they can't deny it anymore yeah. and i love that whole story arc of his where he just gets like hit with it when i think lance is his name and he like portals out of there giving yes. him the bird and turner is just like what was that and so alex then has to like kind of explain things to him um and so yeah, I loved I loved his whole yeah. story arc and and even at the end, you know, him him and Alex are like reluctant allies and I I liked how I liked how even at the end after all the stuff they've been through, he I don't think he quite likes her, but he like trusts her to some extent. He like he sees that she's not trying to just be like an awful person like some of these other people i think he sees that she is like actively trying to do good and be on his side but she just needs to go around the yellow tape to do it sometimes yeah. um and so i think he that's that's kind of where his character gets to and then i think where she gets to in the relationship between these two characters is at the end she she mentions like he hasn't responded to me i i think he's gone for good and then she says which sucks because it would be nice to have one of the good guys on my side and so she kind of has like a change of heart too where he's not just like this asshole cop who's looking for a promotion she's like no he's he's one of the good guys he's he's trying to do good too and so i think they kind of come to like a mutual understanding and then at the end he's like i this has been a lot and I just need to go away for a yeah. bit. Um, and so I, I think that's where he ends up if I'm not mistaking the, uh, the intention of, of his character, but yeah. Cause you kind of find out that like, there's a reason everybody takes these positions that they've taken. You know, you find out Sandow had a messy divorce and, you know, mm. she took him for everything and Turner is needing to pay off some debt. I can't remember what it was. And, you know, yeah. Alex, had everything happen with her in that house with all of her old friends and so that kind of forced her hand and so it's interesting to see these two people who were kind of forced into these situations they may not have necessarily wanted to be in but they were making the best of it and finding somebody else that you can like commiserate with along the way could could make life a little bit easier right right yeah i loved I loved her relationship with, uh, is it Dawes? Dawes. Yeah, yeah, she's my Dawes favorite. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, she she was so good. Just like the bookish kind of like nerd girl. Yeah. Um, like if I had to pick someone to be in the whole series, I would want to be Dawes. The one who just like cooks for everyone. Like I love to cook. <laughs> yeah. Does all of her research in her spare times and just makes sure that everything that's in our storage is yeah. the way that it's supposed to be. I was like, oh, I want Dawes' job. I was like, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny one yeah. one character that i was hoping would be like a staple of the series and would be like a recurring character is uh bell bomb mm -hmm. um who is like uh you know from the beginning i i liked bell bomb because i was like alex has all of this other stuff to deal with all the time and bell bomb is just like this refuge she like she wants to give alex a job and she wants mm -hmm. her to like intern and there's these other people that like work yeah. for her that alex is friends with and i'm like this is cool because it could be like her retreat from everything else uh but then of course we find out that bell bomb is daisy and that colin um i where did we land on colin is he a shithead or I think in the end, we she realized that Colin actually had no part in what she thought he Oh, he did. really? And it was really um, Tara getting into it with, uh, oh my God, why am I blanking on this? Um, Lance or Blake? 
Blake because she didn't yeah. realize what she was making when she was selling it to him. And Lance says, like, I tried the Belladonna and I didn't get high. And so I thought it was nothing. And then we sold it to Blake and he kept coming back for it. Oh, okay. And she had gotten into the greenhousing of things. And I think Tara just got in over her head with people that she didn't realize were a lot scarier or could do a lot of bad things to her. Um, because yeah. I mean, it's layered at the end where you find out the nexus for each house is built on a girl being killed, but you find out that bell bomb eating the girl's soul is what causes the nexus. Right. And Sandow and them didn't necessarily realize that that is what was actually yeah. causing right. the nexus. So it's this very weird so layered explanation at the end. Yeah, I was I was a little bit confused, so I wasn't entirely sure what a nexus does. Well, ley lines are real things right. on the planet. And what I took a nexus to kind of be is like where a ley line would cross. And they okay. say that that's where a lot of energy is stored as opposed to like just in other regular places. Right. And it seemed like they were creating them in that sense because they were like you could just build a building but it's not going to have any power behind it but if we kill this girl they believed that's what created the power underneath the structure but right. it was bell bomb actually eating their souls right okay that created it so, so that's it, that's how they're able to use their magic is by being at the nexus that by building the, what do they call them? Um, mausoleum. Nursery, mausoleum, yeah, over it. And then being able to use that as like their base for power. But without being on top of one, you're really not going to get any results whatsoever from your magic. Right. Which right. is why New Haven is like the hot spot for it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because these, I, I wonder if we'll find out in later books that it's not just New Haven. It's like, there's other places where these kind of characters have existed that can see ghosts and stuff. And maybe they've eaten souls over there and created new nexuses. Um, do you know, how, right. Do you know how long the series is supposed to be? Well, uh, Lee Bardugo originally said she wanted this to be a 12 book series. What? So there's no know. way. <laughs> I, there's I, no I, way you could stretch this day. into a 12. I Googled, um, when will we get book three? And I don't know if she still plans for it to be a 12, but she said mm. she had initially planned for it to be a 12 book series. That's way too much. Yeah. I, um, I don't, I don't think you can stretch this idea that far. No, unless she turns her into like a detective of her own who goes around, you know, the United States or the world helping out with all of these other supernatural types of issues. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I could see it being possible that there's other places like this because uh, there would have to be with a 12 book series, right? Yeah. Daisy was saying that the wheel walker, right? Wheel, wheel, wheel walker, um, yeah. all were kind of drawn to New Haven. Mm. Um, so I have to assume like they came from somewhere and if they came from somewhere, they could have done the same thing themselves in those other locations they just didn't know enough about it to be able to right 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 okay okay so what happened at the end there with uh so she releases all of the other souls are they just back now are they back in like the ghost world or so when Belvon ate the other souls they were still like trapped inside of her Right. And that's why the bridegroom couldn't find any of them on the other right. side of the veil. I think by Alex fighting Bellbomb, trying to eat her soul and essentially eating Bellbomb's soul. Yeah. It released the other one so they could go to the other side of the veil and finally like rest in peace. Did she did she eat Bellbomb's soul? I'm pretty sure she ate Bellbomb's soul. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was okay. like, sort of like, how do you, how does it feel now? You know, right. that like, it's done to you because Bellbomb had realized that she was so powerful. She could eat, jump into these other women's bodies, eat their souls, and then take over their full body. And Alex right. realized, oh no, like I can do this back to you. It's really more a battle of wills. Right. Point. Yeah. The, yeah. the battle of wills at the end was, yeah. was awesome. Yeah. That sure. was really, 
I remember the first time reading it being like, wait, 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 she's Daisy? Like, I was so yeah. confused. Oh, and my God. It was confusing because, so Daisy was a wheel walker. Yes. And she accidentally let someone into her, a ghost, that killed the bridegroom and then killed herself. Yeah, so wait, let me so let me try to understand it because that was a little confusing too. I even have a note somewhere in my notes where uh it's like we we see that scene where where Alex uh jumps into or she allows uh the bridegroom in uh north. She allows north in and she sees uh north and his bride and then all of a sudden he gets sucked over to the body where they have like the stomach open and they're reading the entrails and all that and then he jumps back and daisy's already been shot and he's like super confused and shoots himself right so i think the ghost is one you know in the beginning very beginning of the book where alex goes and she's watching the prognosis prognosis yeah. whatever you say um that's what that's what i was saying i'm like is that did he jump in time so i think they have been saying that they have done this forever and remember no more dead uh, hobos yeah thing right yeah from way back in the day because okay. one homeless person had been killed so i think whoever daisy initially accidentally pulls in was one of those people who had been on the table at one point and okay. they say that somebody on the table had died. So I think the one she pulled in was the one who died, who then killed the bridegroom, North, and then kills her. And then okay. as Daisy's dying, she jumps into her maid's body and realizes right. she killed her maid's soul. Right. So then North, but North jumps back in his body at some point, right? I think it was just taken over for a moment. Oh, okay. He has no power, control, ghost, anything. Okay, okay. Interesting. If I'm understanding it correctly. <laughs> okay, yeah, because that was, that was like a little bit confusing. I got the gist of it, but yeah. I was like, I, I wish that had been, I mean, I, I'm sure it was explained and I just need to do a reread, but. Even on my second reread, it's a very like, layer upon layer upon layer thing which just yeah it's it's a little convoluted it's it's yeah. a little it should have been a little clearer right <laughs> on, for sure on the big reveal so and yeah. i mean she does make you think you're getting the big reveal and then you find out like a couple of ages later you're really getting the big reveal which just adds to the confusion a little bit because you think it's kind of over and then yeah. you're like Oh no, the Sandow explanation is not it being over. There's actually yeah. Well this, that yeah. That that was the the sad part because even when Bellbaum came in, I was like, "Oh, Bellbaum's here to save the day." And then you find out it's Daisy and it's like, "Oh, Daisy and the bridegroom can get back together." And then you find out that she is like evil and it's like, "Fuck." Yeah. Like, uh, "Oh god." That yeah. was just <laughs> such a like hope and then die like oh yeah. my god yeah that was tough that was tough so let's talk about darlington for a second because this was a character that i initially didn't know what i thought of it like i didn't know what to make of him and after a while he became like my favorite character that was never there like he yeah. <laughs> he was so good i because he initially seems like this like rich like stuck up or maybe not even stuck up but just like rich like yale student like exactly what you think of when you think of a yale student and i recommended this book to um a viewer that pops into our our chats a lot nova um i recommended this book to her because i was like i think that you would really really love this book and after reading the description she's like ah I'm not, she's like, I don't want to read about a bunch of wealthy people at Yale. And I'm like, that's not what it is. I'm like, especially like there, there are those people, but they're not like the main characters. Yeah. Uh, as for Darlington, he's like, he is like this wealthy Yale student, but he's so much deeper than that. Like he is such a, he's such like a, at the end of the day, like a good person. And he almost kind of has like an innocence to him where he's like, I, I'm just here to like learn about this stuff. Like I just, he like, 
he gets like abandoned by his parents and he stays in this house by himself and he like gets himself into Yale and is like trying to discover all this stuff. I just, I loved him so much. I loved his story because you initially think he's just this stuck up Yale student and I'm yeah. from Connecticut. Like Yale is very big here in Connecticut. It's like our, our one big school that everyone is like super proud of. And they're very like preppy stuck up stereotype in general it just is what it is and so yeah. that's who he is come to find out that you know you find out his grandfather felt like he kind of failed his son yeah, and this his whole story is, was so good yeah his son and daughter-in-law are very much just people who rich people you're mm -hmm. what you would expect of second generation rich people or yes. our many generation and, who and, and they were taking advantage of like his money and trying yeah. to get like they're like basically they're the kind of kids that are like waiting for him to die so that yes. they can jump on all the inheritance yeah um and you find out that the grandfather made a deal with his son at one point saying like let me raise your son and i will give you this apartment in new york i think it was right and Darlington at, at one part is like, I used to never understand why my father would like allow my, my father and his, my mother to come all the time. And I realized he was really just lonely. And while it was like the same song and dance every single time they came, it was really just because he was lonely. And it was, right. you know, uh, an old man who wanted people in his lives, even if they yeah. were people that he really didn't want in his life. And Darlington realizes, I think pretty early, that his parents are just cut from a different cloth. Like, they care about very different things than he does. And yeah. all they care about at the end of the day is money. And that was one of my favorite parts of the story to find out that he was like, screw you to his parents. Like, I'm not going to be you. I don't want to be you. I see the game you're trying to play and take over all this money and bribe me in the short term to get what you want for the long term and how he lived on his own from what was it 16 mm -hmm. yeah it was a really young age uh keeping up this house that his parents were trying to force him to sell so they could keep the money because he was left the house and they were left the grandfather's estate and he Something was like, like I'm, yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give in i'm gonna fight through this so to go into it thinking he was this stuck up kid with tons of money and to find out that no, he had fought for every single thing that he currently had. It, it really softens you to him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, you see him, you know, a, a lot of times you think when, when you see like a, a rich kid or like a typical Yale students, like they've been given everything in life. Like they, their, their way is paid um and as you see more of darlington you're like no he actually like i think it mentions that he worked like part-time jobs and all sorts yeah, of but... stuff to like <clears throat> try to like provide for himself um and so it's kind of like he he kind of paid his dues uh in like a big way like he uh -huh. you know he was there by himself and after his his grandpa died and his his relationship with his grandpa was so great where his his grandpa was like uh you know i i don't want you to turn out to be uh like your parents and anytime his parents were on the page they were just like awful and terrible um and so i i really liked i i really liked everything um about his backstory and then i think it's a i think it's a darlington pov chapter it might have been alex's but i i feel like it was darlington's uh there's this moment where alex uh is kind of yelling at him it's after the whole ritual at the beginning and or or no it might even be a flashback i think um and she's like why was uh she's like you guys are acting like you're here for me now but She's like, I'm just a, I've just been a science experiment to you. Like, where were you when I was a kid seeing all of these ghosts and it terrified yeah. me and I got hurt by them and they touched me and did awful things. And 
you guys weren't there. Like, you weren't there. Like, why didn't you step in to help me or explain what I was going through? Like, you guys just watched me from afar and, like, kept tabs on me. It was a great scene. And in this moment, he, 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 it's the kind of thing where he's like, I had never really thought about it like that. And he, they're like in the, in the house. Um, she, and she says <laughs> yeah. something to, she, she says something to the effect of like, it makes me want to smash things. And yeah. he's, and you're getting like his inner monologue of him, like coming yeah. to terms with this and like understanding and then he like opens the cupboard and he's like, where would you like to start? Yeah. And he like lets her like smash all of these, like, I'm sure, you know, priceless glasses and, and China sets and stuff. And so I'm like, I, that, that was the moment where I like, I turned on, on Darlington. I'm like, I, I like this character a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was in like the very beginning after one of the first flashbacks to yeah. the first uh, I can never say this word prognostication Yeah, that they go do and he's like you just say the death words or throw the cemetery dirt at them and she's like this could have worked for me my whole life yeah that's what it was not that they had like been keeping tabs on her her whole life and she's like they knew and they didn't give me this information I've suffered my whole life when it, it wouldn't have been easy, but it would have been easier had she known these very simple mm -hmm. rules to dealing with seeing ghosts. And that was, I liked that, that he could finally be like, oh, wow, now, now maybe I see why she's as jaded as she is. Right. Yeah, for sure. And I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, it, it was interesting too, because he, kind of had like a jealousy of her where she was like she could see ghosts and he's like why can't i see ghosts and he's like i i have to do a potion and it talks about like his first time making the potion and how it had this crazy like adverse effect on him mm -hmm. and um and i think it, you know i i think there's kind of this moment where he's realizing oh maybe this isn't like all it's chalked up to be you know like maybe yeah. maybe not not that i don't want this ability but you know i i i didn't consider what seeing ghosts since she was a little kid like what that might have done to her yeah um and so that that was a that was a great moment for yeah sure. it really is you know you don't think of the ramifications of having that ability your whole life and nobody believing you and you having to keep it to yourself because they think you're crazy oh and my here's, god yeah when... here's this ability that she he thinks is like the the most amazing thing in the world and she's like no it's a blessing and it's a curse to me it's mostly a curse right yeah she she kind of doesn't like it <laughs> like she or and she especially up until the point that she got to yale she didn't know how to use it she didn't know she could <laughs> use it um but speaking of no one believing her uh her mom mm -hmm. who is like like how is how is alex supposed to tell her mom that like i see ghosts and i got i don't know if i can say it on youtube but i got like assaulted by one yeah. um and it's like her mom would would probably get her on medication and put her into some sort of war like i i don't think she would have believed her well um, she <laughs> Alex wakes up in the middle of the night one night to one of those <laughs> what is now currently very popular when it comes to documentaries, like where you wake up in the middle of the night to men grabbing you and like handcuffing you and taking you to a troubled teen camp. Right. I vaguely remember this. Her... Cause it's, it's only mentioned. In, oh like, yeah. And she, she runs line. away from them. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She like jumps out of the van or something, but yes. you know, here's this, the only person you thought you could trust so far in your whole life. Mm hmm not believing very clearly not believing you and i don't know what that would have done to me as like a 14 15 year old right. where you're only dealing with something that is just so mind-blowing and you have no one to speak to it about and the one yeah. person that you trust betraying you yeah yeah it's 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 awful and it 
it sets her up to go find uh she runs away and i, I forget what the connective tissue is but somehow she finds this group of friends mm -hmm. um that are all like drug users and stuff yeah. and that kind of sends her down down that road um and that that was a whole crazy storyline too but before we get too far away from darlington i want to mention i i was super bummed that he didn't come back by the end of the story i was like surely they're gonna save darlington and he's gonna go on into the second book and be like a part of the main cast um and i'm not sure that i'm super happy with the plot thread that was his like i i think like him being a not a ghost but he got eaten by this demon that was also kind of confusing i was like what is this demon thing um but him getting eaten and that's why they weren't able to like find his ghost or anything and i'm like dang i kind of I, I kind of like needed him to come back to be part of the crew because I think he was such a fundamental part of this book and flashbacks and stuff. And then to not get him in the flesh, at least in present day, I was kind of I was kind of bummed. And then, of course, at the end, she mentions like, well, what if he's like a demon now? And like we go to hell to get him. And it's like, okay, but, like, how how is he a demon? Like, it says you would have had to commit murder and something else to become one. And so it's I'm... I, I, it's called Hellbent. Yeah, right. So I, I assume... <laughs> I, I assume... And she even says it at the end of the book. I, I assume her plan is to, like, go and, and try and get him, but... I just can't imagine that he comes back from that being the same Darlington that we read in this book, if he comes back at all. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but um, yeah, no I, I <laughs> no, comment. no comment. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely a, definitely a character that I, I really enjoyed and, and wanted to see get a, a better ending than he got in this book if you but... read book two you will get a lot of the answers you are looking for okay that's all i'll say right okay <laughs> okay um so yeah we can talk a little bit about her uh her flashbacks her like drug years with these with these other guys there's i forget what the dude's name is len doesn't she call him len Oh, yeah, Len or Lenny or something. Lenny, yeah. Uh, that's the guy that she was, like, quote-unquote dating. And yeah. one day he brought this girl back to their apartment called Helly, thinking, like, it would make her jealous. And he didn't realize, like, they ended up becoming best friends. And then they were kind of a right. trio from there going forward. We don't get, like, a lot of information on how they all ended up together, really. Mm. You know, you just are kind of expected to understand that like Alex she found them is like in love with Helly. Not like I would say like in love, like yeah. romantically in love, but like in love with her. Like she just loves her like she would like a sister or something and kind of realizes like we're stuck in this shitty situation together. Let's make the best of it that we can until it becomes too much for Alex, I guess. Not really Helly until it's yeah. too late. Um, that I think was one of the most gut wrenching parts of the book to read. Yeah, when I she know. she like sees Helly, but she doesn't realize that Helly's dead. Yeah, already, oh. and it's her ghost that she's seeing. Yeah, and then she finally goes to like touch her. Her arm goes through her, and that's how she realizes she's seeing Helly's ghost. And like the yeah. whole backstory behind it of whoever Len was dealing drugs for his cousin was in town. Who's like this psychopath mm -hmm. and Alex tried to get them out of the apartment for the night. And Helly realized like, no, it'll probably make more trouble for us mm. than not by us yeah. not being there. So when Alex falls asleep in the movie theater, she like sneaks back to the house. Um, I would have loved Helly's point of view from that. I, I would have loved mm. to know what was running through her mind to make her be like, it's better for me to, to go back and deal with this Ariel character, even though 
he's a psychopath than yeah. to just take it out or run away. I don't I don't see what they would have lost by just leaving that apartment. Right. Yeah, that I I was under the assumption that it wasn't because it was going to be bad for them. I I was under the assumption that they were out of money. <laughs> And, Which they were, I believe, right? And yeah, and she was like, "I can just go get more money by going and and doing this." And so that's what I assumed was was going on there. But yeah, maybe it would have made trouble for them if they had if they had not gone. Well, I looked at it as Lenny was trying to impress them because the the one guy would only ever give Lenny weed to sell, and he wanted more he wanted drugs where his profit margin was larger and the guy didn't like to sell fentanyl unless he knew where it was cooked and came from and it was clean, but he had gotten some really dirty fentanyl that had been passed through hand to hand to hand and he didn't know what was left in it. So he finally gave Lenny the opportunity to sell a more serious drug to make more money. And because of that, he wanted to impress them when he was bringing his crazy cousin to town yeah by throwing this party where here's some women that i can give you to do whatever you want to do with them right and by the two of them not being there and we have seen in the book multiple times where alex sells sexual favors mm. to clear lenny's debt that i think kelly was like if we're not there to do these things as females in lenny's right. coterie or whatever you want to call it harem yeah, um, it's going to cause a lot more problems for us in the future. That's how I had looked at it. OK, yeah, that makes more sense. Definitely. Um, But it was so really sad. It was yeah. Just really sad. Was... How they talked about how Ariel would like dislocate girls shoulders like mm. a boy picking butterfly wings. Yeah. Off, you know, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that was that was awful. That was yeah. It it's easy to say like, I don't know why this person would do this or that or this. But then when you read the lives and the backstories, you're like, okay, I can almost understand how they ended up here and why yeah, they thought for sure. it was the best decision for them at the time. But it's heartbreaking. And, yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, I think it, it makes Alex such a good character because she's, she came from, all of this like drug use and living on the streets and all in all these awful situations to Yale, um, mm -hmm. where you would think that she would be like pampered and taken care of and stuff, but she's also dealing with all of these other shitheads and it kind of gives her the ability to like not take anyone's shit and yeah. just kind of like do, do her own thing. Um, and so I, I really liked that part of her character where she was like, uh, you know, she was like, you guys are soft. Like, I I know how to, like, manipulate all of you. Like, we see it at a, I had a note about it somewhere. Um, she, uh, she is able, she goes to the morgue to see Tara's body. And she doesn't even need to use the charm. She just, like, masterfully manipulates the uh the front desk lady into yeah. into doing what she wants um and i i really like that scene the narrator especially yeah. like nailed that scene um but there's scenes like that and then there's scenes like uh with trip when she's talking with him one-on-one -on -one, and she's just like cruising her way through the conversation just like knowing exactly what buttons to push to get him to yeah. do what she wants and I'm like that. That all comes from her like previous experiences, or where the other Yale Blake? students wouldn't. What's How about that? Her with Blake. Yeah, we could we could talk about Blake. That was, I mean, that was more of like a magic thing, um, than like pure manipulation. But... but she found out about what happened to her roommate and was like, "I'm taking care of this," and she mm -hmm. took care of it. Like yeah. she just flew into action and was yeah. able to plan all of these different things to get it done. And I found that so impressive. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of wish that Blake as just as a character would have been set up a little bit earlier in the story. I can um, agree with that. Cause I, I think at that point, like he wasn't the big bad, but he was like one of the 
like major bad guys that had kind of done all this stuff and everything like gets pinned on him. Yeah. Um, and so I would have liked a little bit more foreshadowing with him. Um, but I, I love that whole side story where like she comes home and her roommate is crying and she's like, what's going on? They show her the video and she sees that there's like the girl's tongue is purple and all this stuff. Um, and then she like she goes and manipulates the uh what was it it starts with an m right oh Not maverick um, manuscript manuscript yeah yeah she goes there and gets what she needs to get to then go to blake and it's like this this powder that she ingests and that was so great if you go back and just listen to that section just pay attention to what the narrator is doing there because what this narrator does with her voice in these conversations is so good. That's like where I first noticed like, wow, this narrator is so amazing um, mm -hmm. with, with how she's able to convey not only what Alex is saying, but how she's trying to say it. And yeah. the narrator does such a good job of bringing that to life. So I highly recommend if you're going to go back and listen to anything, listen to that scene again. But um, she goes into the she goes into the fraternity and she's able with with this charm working, she's able to kind of like schmooze her way in there. And it is so great when she comes back to the apartment. She's like, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. No one's going to see the video. She's like, what are you talking about? Um, and she's like, you'll see, like, everything's going to be fine. They go to lunch the next day and it was such a, it was like a movie perfect scene, like cinematic moment <laughs> yeah. where like they go into the, the lunch room and you can just picture like everybody picking up their phone. Everybody's starting to laugh and you think they're all about to start looking at, uh, Mercy. Macy, Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think they're all about to start looking at her. Like all, everybody is going to zoom in on her. But instead, people continue looking at their phones. They're like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And one of the girls pulls up their phone like, do you see this? And it's Blake in the bathroom. Like, and it had talked about like a clogged up toilet or whatever. And he's just like shoveling shit into his mouth. Um, and it's a great callback later when... So I, I imagine the, the phrase that she used was eat shit. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like why he was doing that. Um, and I loved in the video too, the God, the, again, the narrator did such a good job of like bringing this voice to life, but he's like, he's like going over to the toilet and he's like, what do you want me to do? You're crazy. This is crazy. And I, I just love the way the narrator like did that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought that was so funny cause it painted such a good picture of him, under this trance just enamored with alex yeah. like what you're crazy <laughs> like I, yeah. yeah i love that so much um but then it's great later we get the call back to it when he now has the charm and he tells her eat shit and die yeah, yeah. and he like throws it back on her i'm like oh and we didn't get to see we didn't really get to see her like struggling against the charm that much, which I was kind of disappointed with. But um, I like that there was that that callback there. Yeah. And um, yeah, the the one thing I will say before I go on with that, the one thing I will say about the magic is I think. And don't get me wrong, a lot of books are this way. I I kind of look past a lot of this stuff because it just kind of things need to happen for the plot and i totally yeah. get that and i let a lot of that slide um but in this book especially i think it was just weird to have three different kinds of magic that all basically did the same thing you have like the a coin. the what the coin and then you have yes. the power and, and then you, have... and then you have the purple tongue stuff yep. and it was like why why do all of these things do the same thing? Like, why do we not just have? Can we have just had it be one? Yeah. The form source, the pill, the powder, whatever, and it would yeah. make the story more cohesive, right? We're better able to predict. 
Right, exactly. And I, I think that, you know, the reason, possibly the reason she needed the coin, the, the author needed the coin in addition to these other two types of manipulation is so that Alex could find the coin later on in the series and realize, or later on in the story yeah. and realize that uh, uh, Blake was under the coin or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I... I'm like, man, she could have found like a bag of powder or something. Like, I don't think we needed like a third. I, I don't know. I was just kind of like, it's, it's just too many. And it seems like hopefully the magic isn't like that going into the second book. Hopefully it like diversifies a little bit. Uh, but that was definitely something I noticed. Um, but the ending there, or not like the ending, but like the pre pre ending. Mm -hmm. Um, where Blake is, she's like, I need to go out to, uh, Darlington's house and just get away for a while. And then Blake like knocks down the door and he's coming up the stairs and he's like attacking her. Um, it, it was just such a, such an amazing scene where it's one of those moments where you're like, how is she going to get out of this? Cause she's all on her own. There's. Like, in the moment, I couldn't think of anyone that would come in at the last second because Turner was off doing his thing. Uh, Sandow, I didn't really know a lot about him, so I didn't expect him to come up the stairs. Um, but he, he knocked out. Yeah. And so he, so Sandow comes up, but then he gets turned on Alex. And he's like, yeah, I'll kill her, whatever. Um, and there's this moment where Alex has realized that Darlington is dead, or at least what she considers dead up to that point. Um, and so she's like, Darlington is no longer the head of Lethe House. Like, he's not, he's not like the main guy anymore. Like, that has potentially been passed down to his Dante. And so she has this moment where... Uh, She's on the ground and she's get, getting attacked by both sides and she's she's realizing this like like I'm it now like I'm at the head yeah. of the house basically and she goes into her thoughts and she like projects it like to Lethe I don't know exactly how all of this works but she she connects with Lethe somehow mm -hmm. and she says please help me I am a daughter of Lethe send me my hounds and oh it was just such oh, a so good. oh it like gave me chills like i am a daughter of lethe yeah. send me my hounds and the hounds just come out oh and it was, it was something that's was... only mentioned like once so early yes. in the book that you think it's kind of like this just like throwaway yep. proof of magic it was and perfect all back was just uh Oh just. my God. I know. <laughs> I, I love those moments where it's yeah. just like someone, uh, almost like claiming their birthright. Like, like Realize I am this, happen. like, yeah. yeah. Like, Oh God. It was so, so good. I loved it so oh, much. God. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, uh, the end of Blake there. Yeah. Um, so then she she goes and interrogates uh, Sandow, and I love this quote uh, where she's like, um, she like goes and confronts him, and she's like, "Don't start lying yet. We've got a lot of territory to cover, and you'll want to pace yourself." <laughs> yeah, great, great, such a great that. line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah, she's just like my kind of smart ass. Right. Eastern. Yeah, it's just I, like yeah. I relate to that to being like I don't care if I feel fucked at the moment like I'm still going to be sarcastic and throw whatever punches I can while I can still throw them <laughs> yeah yeah I really I really liked her particular brand of sass because she wasn't like I think I I think some characters rub me the wrong way when they're like very sassy because they're like sassy all the time. Yeah. And I think Alex has a good way of like picking her moments uh -huh. to to like throw it back in somebody's face. Um yeah. because a lot of the time she's like as far as like she's like edgy or whatever, but she's like pretty calm and collected for for yeah. most of the time. Um, but then you get some of these just like great 
little zingers that's like yeah. oh man that was that was perfect and it doesn't feel um you know i i, I think something that a lot of modern day writing suffers from and by modern day i mean within the past i don't know like eight years or something a lot of it when when you have these kind of characters it can feel very like girl bossy and like in your face and like it's kind of like i i roll my eyes at it sometimes it's but being a Alex, girl boss to just be a girl boss without right. the actual real cause behind it mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that like in this story, it was it was more subdued. Like Alex, like there's there's no way you could go through this book and say that she didn't have like main character energy. But yeah. she there was a subtlety to it. Like she felt like even though she did have like that main character energy, it she she felt like a fish out of water. Like she didn't feel like she was the most powerful person at the school she felt like she was a little under her weight class or, or boxing out of her water. weight class yeah what's that she was like a fish out of water you know yeah. like this wasn't her fight but it has now become her fight and she's going to do everything she can in her power to try not to lose if she right. if she can regardless of the outcome right yeah and and she had just enough like feistiness to be like fun while doing that while while not being like cringy and and overbearing yeah. with it i feel like same um and plus i think you know through the flat this is where the this is where the flashbacks succeed in in my opinion is mm. you do get that backstory and you get to see that she she earned her stripes just like darlington did like she she earned her right to be a little bit you know, main character girl bossy a little bit because you yeah. see the past where she is just at the lowest of the lows and where she's not in control. And even even up until all, all through that past story, she she was never at really at a point where she was like, well, I got one over on them. Like even when she killed everybody, it was Helly doing it. It was yeah. it, it was Helly possessing her and doing it. It wasn't yeah. like it, it wasn't like Lee Bardugo just wrote this character that was like, yeah, I'm going to write this sad character that ha has had no power this whole time. But all of a sudden when she's really mad, she's yeah. able to kill all this <laughs> men, all these men. Yeah. It was like, no, there was something supernatural happening that allowed her to have this extra power to kill all of these men around her. And so it felt yeah. real. Plausible. Like it, it, yeah, it felt plausible. It <laughs> felt earned. Um, and so I, I didn't, I, I didn't have that like eye rolly cringy moment with, yeah. with that, which I was really surprised with. Um, did we talk about Lance? Cause I was kind of confused on what his role in the story was. Like, obviously he was the dealer with Tara, but at the end we see him like portal in and portal out of that apartment. And then when she talks to him later, don't we find out that he doesn't actually have portal magic? He was just using a thing. It's that like he a tab of acid, essentially. Right. Okay. Portal magic. And my favorite part was when Alex was like, well, why didn't you portal to the table? Then you could have gone wherever you wanted to. But the main yep. thing I think behind all of that was that when Tara got into like growing all of the things that people needed, they started letting them in on all of these like secret society things of that house and so they were portaling and so they had these extra tabs that the houses right. used to portal so he was kind of just like an idiot along for the ride right and was too dumb to realize that he could have gotten himself out of the prison situation that he was in yeah. um which just kind of showed his true character in the end you know like yeah because he, he jumped back to prison <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like well I, I i don't have the table with me the jumping isn't good without it and it's like well you could have jumped to the table and then you could yeah. have gone wherever you wanted and mm. when he realizes that he's just like defeated like oh. right god okay yeah. i i wonder did we find out where he ends up at the end of the book or is the last time we saw him just in that jail cell i feel like they talked about it at the end 
And I don't think he got put away for, for Tara's death. I don't think so. I think because Turner knew got that pinned it on Blake. Him, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure he did not go away for that. Okay. I'm not going to lie, though. I listened to the end earlier today. Yeah. Uh, and I, I honestly can't. Oh, I can't. I'm pretty sure he didn't get put away. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, because I'm... I think there was so much going on with the secret societies. And because Turner knew that it wasn't really him i think he he got out of it i don't think he was i mean he didn't really kill her so i think that whoever whoever if it was sandow or whoever he had go kill tara was using the the illusion magic to make it look like it was lance so it was never actually lance right yeah yeah okay so yeah that's that's a question i so she dies and Alex sees her memories, right? And, or something like that. I forget exactly how it worked. But she sees the murder. And the person that is over her looks like Lance. So who, was that Blake looking like Lance? Or who, wait, who, who actually was? I can't was remember it? who it was, but it was not Lance. It was either right. like Sandow or whoever Sandow had picked to do it. I, I can't remember it. Okay. Yeah, I was a little bit confused with the it whole... It was uh... not Lance, though. It was definitely not Lance. Right. There was a bit of magic that I feel like I've seen in a book recently... And I don't remember if it was something that you and I read or what, mm -hmm. um, but Alex, uh, she gets like beat to shit and Dawes yeah. puts her in a bath of goat's milk and she's like, crucible. yeah, yeah. And she's like, it's not actually healing you. It's turning time backwards on your body. Right. Um, and I could have sworn there was a book that we read recently that had like a similar magic where the healing magic wasn't actually healing. It just turned time back. And I can't remember if it was like Harry Potter or if it was, if it was something else. Um, but I feel like I've, I've read it, read something well, like I that. Mean, kind of in Harry Potter, you know, with the time turner, but they weren't really using it for that. Right. Definitely not the will of the many. Definitely not. I mean, kind of the Liza Locke Lamora book two or whichever one they're healing Locke from the poison. Oh, is that what it was? Because Maybe they're not really, he, they're trying to turn his body back or something to the pre-poison, right? Maybe. I think that's oh, what Oh, yeah, mean. that's what it was. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they're because they're, they said you're we're getting your body to the state it was in before the Yeah, before the yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that makes more sense. I was trying to figure that out. Um, but somewhere in the same vicinity of the story, <clears throat> we'll we'll talk about this and then we'll jump to the to the ending. Um Alex uh starts letting north into her body, this the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And uh I'm curious what you think about North, but I also want to say I think it's so funny that during I think it's right after the goat's milk thing. Um, she, uh, she, 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 at first she's wary about letting North in because she, everybody tells her like, you can't get close with the ghosts. Like, it's really bad if you do that. Um, but he turns out to be like an okay guy and he, I can't remember if he tells her or, or if she just guesses, uh, that he wants to feel, uh, what it's like to eat again. Yeah. And so she she gets out of the goat's milk bath and she has like this bowl of like macaroni and cheese. Yeah, and, <laughs> and those, like Yeah. <laughs> and so like she uh she like lets him in and she's like seeing his memories and then she comes back and she's just shoveling yeah. macaroni and stuff into her face. <laughs> and I'm like that that is hilarious. Yeah. That is so funny. It was um, great because it's true though. You think like, yeah, watched a couple things like the magicians TV show. There's someone who's like corporal form for centuries. And yeah, when they get brought back into a body, the first thing they say is, 
all these bodies do is need to eat and poop, eat and poop, eat and poop. That's all you do. And this reminded me of that, where it's like they go for so long, not having to eat, not having to go to the bathroom. And so when they're given this chance of like being able to experience life again, I mean, can you yeah. imagine going through life, life for centuries and you can't touch it, feel, taste? Yeah nothing and then you're getting this like really quick chance to i mean i'd do the same thing. yeah oh for <laughs> sure yeah that would be that would be insane we yeah. we take all of that yeah. for for so granted. i like that it was a very like realistic type of thing to throw in. yeah it was like yeah <laughs> i just love the fact that yeah. he was so like uh uh what's the word just like voracious for <laughs> it like it wasn't <laughs> It, it wasn't like he was sitting there with her body just like eating mac mac and cheese. It was like she said yeah. that she had so much in her throat that she couldn't breathe and had to like throw right. it up. Yeah. And I was like, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. What so what did what did you think of North overall? I felt bad for North because yeah. you know, you go into the first half of the book thinking that he's this famous New Haven killer who killed this his deranged, dad. yeah. And whatnot. And then to find out that, no, he's been a ghost for all of this time because, like, he has the unfinished business of that he did not kill her. And he also would like to know. Yeah, who killed why her? They were both killed and he can't find her on the other side of the veil. And, you know, it, it I love that kind of. Yeah. Plot point where it's like, oh, you went in thinking one thing and it turned mm -hmm. out to be this completely opposite. Yeah, I, I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I hope I hope he sticks around in the second book. I hope he becomes like a a regular person that she's interacting with or having like possess her or whatever. I would imagine that her magic evolves to the point where because there's a character like this in the Dresden Files. Um, I would imagine that her magic evolves to the point where she can like just pull ghosts into her at will to like fight for her or to like help her fight. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of her thing. Um, and so I hope that's kind of where it goes. Um, but it would be cool if he was like a constant companion with her that was mm -hmm. kind of always around. And I was really surprised that uh, Heli wasn't that. I thought when we got the Heli death scene and like heli takes her over and like kills everybody i thought that heli was gonna be i thought we were gonna find out that heli had been this ghost that had been with her over the past few years yeah um and i was really surprised that she wasn't i was like what what a missed opportunity and unless heli is coming back in some way later on i was just kind of like why why wouldn't she like stick by her best friend and like help her in her spirit form? Um, unless I there's it's something more I of a like origin story type of thing where like, yeah, you would love to have this character more, but like, no, like they serve their purpose in life and then they serve their purpose after life. And then they were able to move on and be in peace. Oh, they you think it. she's moved on to like whatever? I think she's moved on. I, oh, okay. I think she's moved on. But if I, I, I'm being a thousand percent honest, I barely remember book two because it's been years sure. since I've read it. I only remember like one major thing about it, which is my okay. problem is that I read so much that as soon as I finish one, I kind of really forget most of anything I've just read. Sure. Um, I, I don't think it's brought back up. I think that's it. I think that's it with Helly. That's just like Alex's origin story right 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 okay okay cool um so yeah we can we can jump to uh to the end here and and kind of wrap up um yeah. so as we uh as we get to the end we get the whole thing with sandow sandow gets uh eaten by the by uh daisy and mm -hmm. then alex basically eats daisy um and it's all of the people Daisy had eaten free to go right. to the afterlife. Yeah. Right. Um, and so then we get Alex. Uh, she mentions like, oh, I have to, you know, slink away. I can't just go through the garden because they saw me come through here. So I'm going to go back out to the party and tell everybody that, uh, you know, that he's talking with Bell Bomb or whatever and, and they can you know, find the bodies that way. Um, and then she has like a final interaction with Turner where he's like, 
you left me a body? And she's like, I didn't kill him. And he's like, yeah. okay. And, it, you know, we, we talked about that yeah. a little bit where they're, like, trusting each other now. Uh, and then yeah. she has, like, a final moment with, uh, with Dawes. And did I understand correctly that Dawes is going away? What, wasn't I, Dawes like, I'm going to go back to my family's house. Like, I can't do this anymore. I do remember something vaguely to that. I just can't remember if it was she was like a senior and like this was it and now I'm done. Or mm. if she just couldn't handle it. I I, I think it was a just like this was too much for me. I'm supposed yeah. to be the person who stays in the hutch all the time and does my research and makes you food. Right. And this is not what I signed up for. This is far too dangerous <laughs> yeah for, me. for sure for sure yeah which is what I, I i think it really was i think she was just like this is not i wasn't supposed to be the research student i wasn't supposed to be doing anything hands-on right 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 would it would it be a spoiler to say if she's in the next book she's definitely in the next book oh okay okay yeah, interesting she's definitely in the next book okay okay cool um I think so, like yeah. the main premise without spoiling anything uh -huh. is Alex and Dawes trying to bring Darlington back. That's the simplest way to explain the synopsis of book two. Okay. So at the end of this book, Dawes decides not to go away. Is that is go understood? Like Cause I think it was like the end of the school year. Oh, okay. Where Alex has nowhere to really go. You know what I mean? Oh, so I wonder what Alex is going to do for the summer. Because her mom came out, and that was like a good scene. I, I re don't really have much to say about it. Yeah. Um, but her her mom came out, and it seems like that... I don't know. I don't want to say that wouldn't be an option for Alex, but it seems like she wouldn't want to. That's very true. I think... Alex feels kind of betrayed by her mom over yeah. you know, not believing her and un being unwilling to tell her about her real father. And there's a lot of history there. And I think Alex feels like, although it's really crazy and chaotic in Yale, it's kind of where she was ultimately meant to be. Right. Right. Where she can do good with the gift that, or curse, you know, that she was given. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, I'm interested to see how it how it all kind of leads in into the second book. Any anything else on the ending? Anything we missed that you wanted to make sure we we got to? No, I mean, I think we really covered it. I especially with the end, you know, remember when Bell Bomb initially offers Alex the like summer internship and Alex yeah. is like really excited. I think that also plays into what you were just talking about where he, you know, Dawes would go home for the summer and Alex is so desperate to maintain this new life that she's been gifted and cursed with that um i think that kind of explains maybe jaws leaving for a while right but i mean overall i just i thought the storytelling was interesting if not the way i would have gone with it myself if i were to write this exact book over again sure. um i think the double in the past storytelling got a little bit confusing at times especially in the beginning and like you said with Blake, I think there should have been more buildup beforehand on, you know, that being the ultimate catalyst, whatever you want to call it. Um, sure. But I mean, I, I, it was definitely a book I enjoyed and I've, yeah. it was like my third time rereading it and I learned something new every time I go back. Um, so, I mean, I definitely think it's like worth a read for people yeah. who are curious about it, but if they're at this point of the video, I would hope yeah. they've, hope they've read already it. read it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, if, if we're going into final thoughts here, yeah. um, you know, I, I would agree with, with everything you said. I, I think for me, like I, I already really like this book. I don't want that to be like misunderstood, mm -hmm. but I think what would have made this book like a nine or a, maybe even a 10 out of 10 for me, um, probably not a 10 out of 10, but it would have made it like closer to is if everything was just a lot more subtle and a lot more grounded, um, I think having the magic so in your face right from the beginning, um, just like it, like I said before, it took a lot of the mystery out for me. Um, and it, it honestly made it feel like 
it made it feel like a Dresden Files book because in the Dresden Files, pretty much right from the beginning, you know that Harry Dresden's a wizard. You know that he can actually do magic and it's not just like some like something weird that's going on with his head or whatever. Like it's it's actually like a thing. He can throw fireballs. You know all that right from the beginning. Um and I was kind of hoping I I guess when I thought of Dark Academia I thought of like this very like subdued like somber tone of like little mysteries getting revealed here and there which they are but just in a different way than I was expecting. Um I I I mentioned this at the beginning too but I expected her to like work her way through the through the mystery and eventually find out that all this stuff was was really happening. Um, and so I think the the book could have like taken a step back from everything being so in your face because it feels yeah. very urban fantasy. Like yeah. it, it, it almost feels like this would fit better into urban fantasy than dark academia. Um, but now I'm curious, uh, is there any other, have you read any other dark academia that you would yeah. recommend? I wouldn't recommend this book, but it, it made me think of a book that I actually DNF'd and I was very far into this book before I DNF'd it. I DNF'd it in like the last 100, 150 pages. Okay. I'm annoyed about because I felt like I had put so much time into this book that I should have finished it. But have you ever had those books where you just get to the point where you're like, I kept going because I thought we were going to get this and I didn't get it. And you get to a point where you're like, I'm done. That was me um, with uh, the first law trilogy. That was me with Babel. Oh. By um RF RF Kwong. Kwong. RF Kwong. Um I got at least 3 quarters of the way through that book and I finally had to give up because it was in a sense a dark academia book based off of the origin of words and what power can be used from the origin. Very scientific, very on brand for some of the things that we have liked in the past of like, okay, okay what are we leading to this? Oh, uh, okay. And for such a large book, you cannot leave me hanging for 450 out of the 600 pages and huh. feel like I have still not gotten anything behind what the real point of the book is okay. and that's why i went with Babel, and i wanted to like that book so bad i really oh, really man. did i loved the premise and i got so far and i finally just gave up because i was like i cannot listen to another five minutes on the science behind the origin of a word and you guys have not yeah. given me damn anything oh, you know what i mean that's um, tough but it, it it's very similar in a way to this, except I enjoyed Hellbent. You finally right. gave me little drips and drabs throughout it enough that made me want to get to the end where Babel, like, no, you did not give me nearly enough. I was just annoyed. And I finally right. did it. And I really, really wanted to read it. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, I would I would love to check out some other dark academia books because I think I like the setting. Like I like the I like the idea of going to Yale or or something yeah. mm -hmm. and it, it being like this very exclusive like secret society thing. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think I guess my whole point behind this is is that Ninth House didn't really work for me as a dark academia or like how I picture a dark academia, yeah. but it did work for me in the way that like an urban fantasy does. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think it, I think it succeeds in that for sure. I can absolutely agree with that, especially because you don't really get too much of the ins and outs of any of the, the houses. You only get yeah. leafy, like super, the supervisors, right? <laughs> the HR and of the houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's what was kind of confusing me at the beginning as well, because I was like, what what is a house? Like, what is, it, as it's as it refers to the story, like, what is a house? Like a fraternity. Yeah, and so it, it took me a while to, like, understand. I was like, because it seemed like even the common students at Yale knew about these houses, but maybe they just didn't know there was, like, magic there or whatever. So I was like... 
I, I don't know. I was just like a little bit confused on that, but I, I think I, I got the answers I needed by yeah. the end. Um, so I will say, obviously I'm eager for the sequel. Like I said, I'm probably going to start it on Monday. Um, and then the other final thought I have here is I think that Alex will definitely use this whole Nexus thing, uh, either in the next book or the book after that or something, because it's mentioned at the end of this book that now she knows how to create her own Nexus. Um, but I, I just, I, I'm sure it'll be like bad people's souls or something that she'll use or like demon <laughs> souls or something. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if she, uh, if she creates her own Nexus. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, I was supposed to do this at the beginning, but there was a couple uh, fun facts that you get when you read the audiobook because there's an interview between the narrator and Lee Bardugo. Did you listen to this? I did not. Oh, it's so good. You should, you should, it's only like 10 minutes long. It's so good. Um, because Bardugo talks to, so I guess the narrator has done all of Bardugo's books and they're like really good friends. And, um, Lee Bardugo says that she went to Yale and all of the buildings, including all of the mausoleums and everything that she wrote about are actually there and they're there in the same places that the book describes. So it's not just yep. that they're there, but she like mapped it out and she wrote it accordingly to where they actually are in the campus. Yeah. Um, I mean, they talk about the Peabody Museum, which I have also been to. I can't even count how many times <laughs> and when Carlington talks about how he spends his summers there and he's going through the mineral exhibit I'm like oh I've been through the mineral exhibit like I they were all very true to New Haven like everything she explained is exactly how anyone know who knows New Haven that that is New Haven okay interesting that's yeah. that's really cool yeah which, um, yeah, I always thought like I always felt a little biased because I'm like, oh, I know these places, you know, I know the area, mm -hmm. I know the stigmas or yeah, we can see notions, whatever you want to say. And it is also very true where it's like Yale is its own little bubble, but you get a block outside of Yale on any side of it, and you are in a very different territory than right. what you were just in a block ago. And um I just personally enjoyed it because I could picture these things because I've done that's there. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I would love, I would love an urban fantasy written about like Seattle or something. Yeah. Where, like, it it just know. makes it a little more interesting because you're like, Oh, I've been there. Like I right. know what she's talking about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the other interesting thing is the narrator. Uh, God, I keep forgetting her name. I'm so sorry. It is uh, Lauren. Lauren asks her, uh, if you were going to be in one of these societies, which one would you be in? And Bardugo says, well, I actually was in one. And she's like, I was in uh, Wolf's Head. And she's like, they're, they're like a real thing that you can join if you're a student at Yale. And she doesn't, she didn't explain, like, she says she got tapped in. So I don't know exactly what that means. Yeah, you get tapped is, how do you, how do I explain it in a way of like, is it Somebody like a wants hazing? You in, and so they tap you to like make you an initiate, and you also oh. have to accept it as well. It's almost exact. It's it's a sorority. It's a fraternity. You okay. get tapped. You get you shown interest, and they're saying, "Hey, we want you. Are you interested?" Um, right. I find it interesting that she's saying she was in like Wolf's Head, and in part of the story, they talk about an author who hasn't written a book in how many years. So oh. Scrolling Key does a whole thing to get the person to be able to write a book again. And oh. here's a saying she was in that. one of the houses. That's just really interesting. That's I did not. I did not catch that Easter egg. That is so cool. That's that, interesting. It makes you be like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. I, I love I love the little <laughs> Easter egg with that. I guess when when I think of a sorority, I think sorority, I think of Kappa Phi or whatever, like those yeah. kind of names. And so I'm like, it, does Yale just have like different names for their sororities, like Wolf's Head and stuff, or is it it's like, like is is a society something different? It, it's essentially the exact same thing. 
Okay. A society is much older. They have been around for a lot longer. There's much more secrecy to everything surrounding it, where sororities and fraternities, you basically know what they're about. You see what they're doing. Right. You know, but societies, there's very much like secrecy clouding Uh. all of it. And the only way you're going to find out is by getting in. Like they are not going to let those secrets out. Right. Okay. And you can't like uh, petition to be in one. You have to be selected. You can't really petition. I mean, you, you can give like, I'm sure subtle ways yeah. of showing, but you'd A, have to know who's already in it to be giving those hints right. to them. Um, and that's really not be- readily information readily available, right? Exactly. So okay. it's really more what path are you on for the people who are kind of on the same path to be like, oh, we want them. We're going to attack them. Right. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, well, cool. That's kind of the end of my, uh, the end of my final thoughts. I, you know, I, I enjoyed it and I, I had a good time. With I'm really it. glad to hear that you enjoyed it because I was a little nervous about you. I feel like me and Gabe <laughs> are constantly on the same page with everything. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Where we're both like, yeah, we loved it. And you are the critical thinker that we need a lot of times sure like, well what did you think about this though and it's like oh well now that you put it that way you know <laughs> well to hear that yeah. you did enjoy it does make me feel really good <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i thought it was cool and i i think it has you know a lot of potential and i you know i i had my moments that i criticized yeah. or whatever yeah. but overall i think i was able to like just kind of enjoy where it was going especially once you get to that middle part to the end that's when it really like all yeah. started like firing on all cylinders for me. And it was um, kind of like, different from things we've been reading. You know yes. what I mean? It, it, yeah. it was a nice change of pace. Yeah, for sure. I, I think, I think I definitely needed that. I will say, and I, I should have said this at the beginning, but one thing when we were like starting this book and as I was reading through it after last week, the only thing I've wanted to read is the next stormlight book. <laughs> I love that so, I was just like I was like I want to read Stormlight so bad. Um so I'm I'm excited for uh for us to get to that. But yeah, <laughs> this <laughs> Yeah. This was a a great suggestion and uh, and I'm glad you you brought it up. I think uh a cool thing about you being a co-host now is that you have read a lot of different books to what Gabe and I have read. Um and so I'm sure you'll have you'll have other suggestions that are that are good ones like this yeah i mean my um, last one was good the will of the many that we was great that, so. that, that might be my book of the year yeah <laughs> well that was why this was the book i had suggested because you had brought up and now that you've read it you said you go people have compared the will of the many to nine pals and i remember looking at you and being like you're insane and then when yeah. i thought it, i went oh no people that are kind of forced into one singular opportunity available to them and them just going with it. And that's what I had to go through in my head to be like, Mm. yeah, it's like they are similar in a way, in a way. Yeah. In a way of just like, you know, people going with the opportunities that are thrown at them when they really don't have any others. Right. 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 Um, Have you read any of her other books? Like oh, Shadow okay. and Bone. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Are they all are they all good or is like Shadow and Bone more of like a romanticy? Um, I wouldn't say Shadow and Bone is more of a romanticy. You would think it would be, but it's really kind of like a very subplot part of the book. Um, when I first started book blogging like four or five years ago, that was actually the first series that I did, oh. and it really got me going into a kind of certain genre um okay but i remember loving shadow and bone and i have to say i don't care what anybody says about the television series on netflix i effing love the television series on netflix i think they do a really good job of staying pretty true to the books and i think lee bardugo being a part of it played like a really big part in it staying true to the written text that it came from. Um, but the casting is phenomenal. The characters, okay. the plots, 
I cannot recommend the Netflix show enough, okay. but if you are intrigued enough in it, just read the back of book one and you'll yeah. know immediately if it's something you're going to want to read or not. Okay. I read through them and they're very short, small books. They're, they're not big. You could probably finish the audiobook in like a day and a half, like okay. you know, less maybe. Um, I, I really, I really love her books. I, I have no complaints about any of them. And if you like Nine House, I mean, Shadow and Bone is very different. It is a purely made up fantasy world with powers and everything. But if you liked her writing in general, I think you would absolutely love Shadow and Bone. Okay. Okay. What about uh, a book that got recommended along with this one is Book of Night by Holly Black. I read her other books. I sort of enjoyed them. They were, you would not enjoy them. You would not enjoy The Cruel Prince or any of those books, but um, oh, I do have book okay. night and I've been meaning to read it. It's yeah. different from the Cruel Prince series. Yeah, because if, uh, if you have Spotify Premium, then Book of Night is free on it and you can just listen to it. Um, and so I was thinking about reading it because the the description sounded interesting where these people have like shadows and that they use yeah. that as their magic. Yeah. Um, and so I, I thought that was, that was kind of interesting. Um, I, it had like kind of mixed reviews, so I'm not sure like which way I would fall on it, but yeah. All right. Well, we have been going for a while now. We did our house of the dragon thing before this, and we just talked about uh ninth house for a while so thank you for for hanging out and recommending this book uh definitely excited to to read the sequel so thanks for introducing a, a new one for me yeah i'm definitely gonna start book two as soon as i go downstairs <laughs> nice okay yeah now I'm, i need to remember what happens next <laughs> right yeah i'm i'm eager to see to see where yeah. it goes uh, but all right, guys, that is going to wrap us up for today. Don't forget to reach out using the links provided down below in the description. We love chatting with you guys in whatever way you choose to do so, whether that's Twitter or Discord or right here in the comments on YouTube. Uh, upcoming episodes include Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Uh, maybe we'll have a Dresden Files book. I'm not sure on that. Uh, maybe we'll do the sequel to Ninth House if if we really enjoy it. Uh, we'll we'll have to see how that goes because we do need to get to the next Stormlight Archive book uh, because the fifth one is coming out in December. So hopefully we can get done somewhere around the the vicinity of that. But yeah, that next one is Words of Radiance. Uh, so join us on our Patreon to see all of this content weeks before everybody else on YouTube gets to see it and be part of the conversation live with us. You can uh, make live comments and we'll talk to you during the show. So it's a great deal. But thanks so much for being here today, everyone. And until next time, either wake up and fuck me or stop touching me. <laughs> that would have been your best outro ever. <laughs> Best one. <laughs> I love that. And a big shout out to Caitlin. Thank you so much for backing us at the Greenbone tier.